all heads, hands, arms, legs, and anything else you'd like to retain inside the boat at all times, please. All right, now with all of that being said, I'd like you to go ahead, sit back, relax, and enjoy living with the land. But I guess I have time to tell you a quick joke. Goofy went golfing and he took two pairs of pants. Do you know why? Casey got a hole in one. All right, all right. Here we go. gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. Ways to grow food that will assure both human and animal. 
environmental well-being. By adding compost pollutants and other plant material to our soil, we can reduce the need for fertilizers. In farmlands across America, we're learning that by plowing under vegetation containing natural fertilizers, we can enrich the soil without the use of chemicals. In Saudi Arabia and Mexico, we're learning to produce food on desert sea coasts by developing plant crops that thrive in salt water. Our researchers are always trying different crops and new growing techniques, so whenever you come to visit, you'll see new plants growing alongside of our more traditional popular ones. We're entering our tropical greenhouse where we have a variety of vegetation from the different tropical regions around the world. Our first plant, ladies and gentlemen, are bananas. Bananas are one of the most traditional popular fruits in the world. In fact, more than 28 million tons of bananas are consumed each year. Bananas are high in fiber and potassium and make an excellent addition to your diet. Growing on your left here, we have jackfruit. Jackfruit is one of the largest tree-bearing fruits in the world. It's native to India, can grow up to 80 pounds, and is high in vitamins A and C. The unusual looking plant that you see on the ground here is called a fluted pumpkin. Fluted pumpkins grow almost exclusively in Africa, where it can survive even the poorest soils. Unlike most members of the pumpkin family, the fluted pumpkin's leaves are edible. Yummy! And the tall cactus plant that you see growing here is called dragon fruit. Dragon fruit is native to Mexico and Central America. Today it's become a popular crop in Asia, where it's grown for export. The juice is used in popular fruit drinks here in the United States. All right, so now it's time for your participation. I would like you to raise your hand if you have an herb garden at home. A couple. I'd like you to raise your hand if you have a garden at home. A few more. I know how to get all of your hands into the air. I want you to raise your hands if you cook with spices. There we go. Well, did you know that the taste, the flavors that you get from a spice is actually the plant's natural defense against predators? And coming up on your left, ladies and gentlemen, we have papayas. Not only is it high in vitamins, but it's a fun word to say, and I want you all to say it with me. Here we go on the count of three. One, two, three, papaya. Good job, ladies and gentlemen. And then we have bananas on either side of the boat. Ooh. Ah. Fast fact about bananas, but each tree stock will only produce one bunch of bananas. When I mention the word farming, you probably don't think about fish. But fish farming or aquaculture is one way to increase yields and protect lobster stock. The hybrid bass that you see here are popular among American fish farmers. They're a cross between a white and a striped bass and are both hardy and fast growing. Sturgeon is one of the world's oldest fish and today it is harvested primarily for caviar. It is in danger of being over farmed, but aquaculture is one way to protect it. And coming up on your right, ladies and gentlemen, kind of all congregating in the right back corner over there, we have the alligators. They are no longer an endangered species. In fact, there are over one million alligators in Florida today. Makes you feel kind of safe. Aquaculture is one of the primary reasons for their recovery. Many are raised on farms and the harvest for their meat and hides, while others play a critical role in wetlands conservation. We can grow over 6,500 pounds of fish a year in our office cell. Many of the ones that you see here are featured in restaurants around Walt Disney World. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's a bit early, but go ahead and say hello to dinner. Our next greenhouse has some of our biggest ideas. 
see as ever, like the winter melon you'll see growing in the way back. Winter melon grows throughout all of Asia, where all parts of the plant are completely consumed. Our researchers, using an advanced growing technique, have been able to grow winter melon that weighs over 90 pounds, but generally they only average about 50. Winter melons are also commonly referred to as the wax gourd because of the waxy coating or substance that's on the outside of the rind. Our next plant is a real giant. It's the Atlantic Giant Pumpkin, and it can grow over a thousand pounds. But boys and girls, I taught these pumpkins a trick. You wanna see? We worked really hard. All right, here we go. Stay. I promise if you work really hard, you can teach your pumpkins to stay too. They get their orange color from beta carotene, an important antioxidant. On either side of me, we have some of the largest members of the citrus family. A pomelo can grow up to 25 pounds and taste like a sweet grapefruit, while a nine pound lemon can grow as large as a whole gallon of milk. And I bet you can guess what that tastes like. And here in this greenhouse, we're exploring innovative growing techniques. The cucumber plants just ahead of us are growing in a vertical system that allow them to receive all the water and nutrients they need. This system provides us with a couple of advantages. One, it allows a better airflow through the leaves, which helps reduce disease. And two, it helps to increase our yield from a smaller area of land. You can try this technique at home by growing your plants on a trellis. We had to string our cucumbers up though. They were so afraid of getting into a pickle. <laughs> but let us continue. A nutrient film technique is being used to grow the lettuce on either side of the boat. This technique reduces the amount of nutrients needed, which one, saves farmers money, and two, helps protect the environment. You get a two for one deal there. And oh my goodness, this is so cool, because this isn't something you see every day. Tomatoes growing on a tree. Actually, the tree is a single tomato plant bred to grow in this unique way. The advantage? We can harvest more fruit. In fact, we've been able to harvest over 17,000 tomatoes from that tree, breaking the world record. And, believe it or not, but that tree is about ready to celebrate its one-year birthday. It was seeded on December the 10th. And, coming up on your left, we have the Cinderella pumpkins, which should look familiar to you. They were the inspiration for somebody's magical coach. I just never can remember whose, but the name does always pass me by. Well, maybe not the Mickey-shaped ones. Those are a result of our researchers' imaginative growing techniques. And here in our creative greenhouse, we're exploring cutting-edge research, which may completely change the way in which we grow crops today. I know that you were paying attention, so I know you've noticed that we do not use any soil in our greenhouses. This technique is called hydroponics and is already being employed in areas where the soil has been depleted. Our researchers have taken it one step further and developed an aeroponics system. The flying squash and peppers receive all the water and nutrients they need, spray directly onto their roots as they pass through the mist boxes. Here in Epcot, our scientists are working with the Department of Agriculture to develop dwarf pear trees. The fruit will be normal size, but the smaller trees will be easier to grow and harvest. And for you future space cadets, our final experiment is truly out of this world as we partner with NASA to learn how to grow crops for space colonies. There is so much that we can learn from science and nature about living with the land, and our laboratories really are just one part of the story. Once harvested, the crops must be handled with care as they make the journey from the field to your dinner table, where I know you eat all of your vegetables every night. <laughs> and french fries do not count. Around the globe, scientists from Nestle and other organizations are dedicated to improving the quality and taste of the food that the world both needs and enjoys. By working together, we can help preserve the land as a precious and beautiful resource while still meeting the needs of our growing community. Then, and only then, will we truly be living with the land.
this unique experience of living with the land. You've been a great morning audience. If you could please keep your hands inside of the boat and remain seated until we come to a full and complete stop. If you are interested in learning more about our greenhouses, you can sign up for the behind the scenes tour. The tour desk is located just to the left of the entrance of Soren. And finally, do you remember that winter melon growing in the back? Well, his parents said it had to have a huge elaborate wedding. Do you know why? They said it can't elope. I know. All right. Please get